in your uh, past finals runs, you guys always had a lot of proven firepower around Steph, whether it was KD or Clay in the past. It feels like this is a little bit different, at least through these first couple of games. It's a lot of Steph and then just trying to find where the rest of that offense comes from. Are you guys feeling that? Is this going to have to be done a different way? Oh, well, I think our offense is always a lot of Steph. It all starts um, with Steph, whether, you know, when KD was here, our offense still started with Steph. And, you know, that's, that's the way it's going to be. Known as the immortal three-point king who revolutionized basketball, Steph's first step off the dribble, finishing through contact around the basket, and most specifically his defense, are attributes of Curry's that get heavily disrespected. By breaking down those underrated qualities, but first looking at how the Durant and Curry era tricked the majority of fans into believing a false narrative, this video gives you the truth about Stephen Curry's NBA career. Before continuing, only 11.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. We'll get to the overlooked weapons in Curry's bag, which he's showing off in 2022's finals, but quickly flashing back to six years ago at this time in 2016, when Stephen Curry was coming off two consecutive MVP winning seasons, the Dubs had just taken down Kevin Durant's Oklahoma City Thunder in the previous round, and were one win away from repeating as world champs. But after a blown 3-1 series lead to LeBron's Cavs, Golden State would recruit Kevin Durant, go on to win back-to-back -back championships with Durant winning finals MVP in both 2017 and 2018. This fueled the narrative that Durant was the more impactful Warrior superstar, and his out-of-this-world 35-point-per-game averages on 55-48-94 shooting splits in 2017's finals, and his similarly dominant 2018 finals, backed that up to the point where it was widely considered a foregone conclusion, Kevin had taken over as the Golden State Warriors' Batman. KD's playoff numbers were so dominant in that two-year span, that it hypnotized so many people into forgetting the fact that without Stephen Curry next to him, Durant had failed to win a championship in the nine years prior to his tenure in the Bay Area. And non-coincidentally, after taking his talents to Brooklyn, it's been another three years of not winning a title without Stephen Curry as his teammate. In 2017, SB Nation's Eric Apricot reviewed every basket Durant and Curry scored to determine how often each star created a look for one another. His conclusion was that, Curry directly created a lot of points for Durant in the 2017 finals through a combination of gravity, passing, and screening, about 8 points per game on average. Durant created a lot of points through individual excellence, about 21.6 points per night. It's unfair to say that he was carried by Curry or the Warrior system. Man was a very deserving finals MVP, especially considering what he did defensively. Calling him the most valuable player over Curry during the dynasty, though, is a different story. Cavs coach Tyron Liu, who coached against the Warriors in the finals for three years, has since revealed the nightmare Stephen Curry presented to his team, saying, quote, he's so dangerous, probably the most dangerous player in the league, the way he can get hot. In 2017 and 2018, we blitzed him still with Klay Thompson and Kevin Durant on the floor. So that's how dangerous I think he is. If you're wondering why I'm even talking about this in the first place, stirring up all of this escalated drama, Draymond said in a podcast interview recently, quote, Steph Curry got double teams probably seven times the amount that KD did in a given series. KD responded to that on Twitter by saying, quote, this is 100% false. There's a rumor that Steph was double teamed 62 times in 2018's finals, while Durant was only doubled twice. But other than Steph drawing every bit of gravity, another thing that flew over our heads completely during the Durant years was simply how much more successful of a team the Warriors were when they had strictly Curry as opposed to strictly Durant. From 2016-17 through until 2018-19, with Durant healthy but not Curry, Golden State owned a middle-of-the-pack 57.5% winning percentage, while with Curry but without Durant, that winning percentage skyrocketed to 87.1. It was one of the greatest duos ever assembled, but it's evident who's been this team's most important piece in their championship efforts over the course of the years. Considering all the attention he draws and how he's able to excel working and manipulating out of those defensive game plans, given the argument that Curry's deserved to win three finals MVPs, 
isn't the boldest take at all. After attracting multiple bodies with his magnetic gravitational pull, Curry is able to seamlessly read coverages, whether it's a blitz, trap, double, zone, or box and one, then find and trust the teammate and put just the right velocity on his passes. If the other four guys around him are competent offensively, those players are going to thrive off the open space that the chef cooks up for them. Reason I bring this up is because Steph's strictly known as being a shooter, he doesn't get nearly enough credit for how he breaks down defenses, even elite ones like the Celtics have with his instinctive playmaking. These 2022 playoffs are now the fifth different postseason run of Curry's career that he's averaged at the very least six assists per game. Masterful facilitation is just one of many traits that goes overlooked with the face of the Warrior franchise. How Steph can split double teams with his handle, get an overwhelmingly quick first step with that dribble, then get downhill and finish through contact with his ever-improving strength. Those abilities also never get brought up in a conversation about Steph. The fact that Curry's already broken and is building off every three-point record in the book, including total triples made after passing Ray Allen this season, that distracts us from other above-average weapons he has in his bag. One of those weapons comes on the opposite end of the court, as the DPOY Marcus Smart ranked .5 ahead of him, but Steph ranked as the number four most valuable point guard defender this past season in terms of defensive efficiency. Throughout the dynasty, the effort Curry's given to make some of our league's best backcourt players look way worse than they actually are with his defense is also rarely used in debates about Steph's legacy. But he's proving how valuable his defense really is in 2022's finals. Curry's averaging three steals per game in this series against Boston and is the only player in NBA history to record 25 plus points, five plus made triples, and three plus steals in back-to-back postseason games. And he's actually done so twice throughout his career in games one and two of 2017's Western Conference Finals against San Antonio, and of course, in these past two games. Entering the film room, and Tatum should have found Brown on this possession, who had a lane to find Rob Williams. Instead, Tatum keeps it, and assumes Curry's going to stay on Derek White, who had a big game the outing before. But Curry's watched the film, knows Tatum likes to set up Horford, and blitzes the passing lane. Lazy pass, but just goes to show you how Steph is always looming. Horford tries to play bully ball right here, but the hours in the weight room for Curry pay off as he holds his own with solid footwork, keeping Big Al in front as he tries to put his head down. Porter Jr. gives some great help, and most amazingly, Steph then gets over to cut off the passing lane and intercept Horford's pass. It's crazy they call this man a pure shooter. Of course, those plays don't even come close to doing him justice, as Curry's been the focal point of this team's backcourt defense for the entire season, playoffs, and to be real with you, for the last decade. Steph's lateral mobility allows him to hold guys in front, and in every season of his career, his anticipation, IQ, and as I've mentioned, his pure strength has all annually improved to the point of Curry being an elite stopper at the one. It may seem weird to call him that, but as Draymond said postgame, Curry's a two-way player. Whether it's his rebounding, defense, finishing, or anything else, What's the most underrated part about Steph in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st. Receive free NBA merchandise this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ken Saludo, who gives his take on what the results of Game 2 meant for this series. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.